Hi everyone, welcome to our channel, How to Mainframe. Today we are going to talk about how to use ID cams on ISPF instead of using JCL or a bad job to perform actions on datasets. As you can see here, I started on the dataset list panel. That's the same as going to your ISPF and entering 3.4. And I'm going to look for datasets with this prefix or high level, if you would say. In this case, I you can see that I have an alias and I have a vSAM file and some other normal data sets. Usually when you try the I option on a regular data set, you get a screen like this. So it shows the data set information, DCB, space allocation. But if I try the same, if I PF3 and try the same on a vSAM data set, this happens. We get a different panel, in this case list catalog information. In the panel name changes depending on what you selected on a previous screen. Behind the scenes what's happening is that the vSAM utilities or the IDCAM system services is, is being invoked and this panel is shown to help you select more options or um, the keywords that you want to build the command. So if I just take the default and hit enter, we're going to see the command really quick. Uh, but the thing that I believe is more important on this screen is the edit IDCAMS command. This will allow me, allow me to make changes and maybe add more information to the commands that I want to issue. So if I hit enter, you can see here the command is built for us. So if you didn't know the syntax, here it is. And here I can make changes the same way as I would if I were editing JCL or a PDS member. So if I use R for repeat, maybe I can list a second file here. So build listings. And when I'm ready to run this, I just go to the command line and type exec and hit enter. As you can see, this is similar to the output we get on a bad job when you're executing the IDCANS program. We have our vSAM file, which was uh, the auto-generated command. And if I go down, we have the second command that I enter manually. Also, if I go back here, and maybe I make, made a mistake, so I'm missing this closing parenthesis. If I execute the command again, you can see that I still get the validation that I would get when executing the IDCAMS program on a bad job. So the first command got this warning and the second one executed fine. And similarly, we can try this with a delete. So if I pretend that I'm going to delete this vSAM file, I get the delete dataset panel. Uh, it's a little bit different than the other one, but the idea is the same. So we are getting an easier way to provide all the keywords and information to perform the action, right? In this case, a delete. So let's say if I hit enter just the way it is, the data set we selected is here as input. And if I hit enter, you can see it's a simple delete command just for a vSAM file. Uh, so let's go back and try something else. So if I do a delete again, this time I want to say that this is a cluster and also that I want a no scratch delete, which means I'm only deleting the catalog entry. This is useful when maybe a data set was already deleted from a volume and you just want to delete the catalog entry so you don't see an entry that uh, doesn't exist that can be browsed and, and, and may uh, cause confusion. So if I hit enter now, you can see that I get some line continuation character here and also the two keywords that I added. I I'm not going to execute this one and I recommend that you're careful with the delete commands so you don't cause problems, but it's too good if you want to be sure about the syntax or maybe if you want to try something um, for a single file instead of doing it on a bad job for multiple files. And that's it for today. Um, hit the like button if you like this content 
and subscribe to our channel we'll have many more videos coming with the similar quick tips and hints like this one and we also have some deep dives on interesting topics on the mainframe thanks for watching see you next time